Hi, I am absolutely terrified of what I've gotten myself into. So I made a lot of Damascus knives in the past and in the realm of what's possible with Damascus, they're all pretty simple. So I want to challenge myself and come up with something unique. Uh, this is what I came up with. So all I have to do to make this happen is take all of the steel, I'll draw it out into two clockwise, two clockwise, and then I'll cut it up, cut it up again, add some it together in a different way, and then I'll get this. It's really simple. It's really not that simple. I can barely keep track of like what all is going on, but I think I got it. And by some miracle, if I didn't mess up anywhere throughout all of this planning, I'm going to need about this much steel. All right, so this is just one of the two billets that I'm going to need. And just because I think it'll be fun, for perspective on how much material you lose while making Damascus, I need two of these, all of this steel, to make one knife that I can cut out of j just this piece. <laughs> if I wasn't doing Damascus, this would be enough. I'll probably have some extra. Um, at least I'm shooting to have some extra. You might have noticed something that I'm doing, something this is similar to the push dagger that I made. I did two pieces of bright steel and then a dark steel, a bright steel, and a dark steel, and repeating like that. And doing that just adds a little extra something something to it. So yeah, that's it. I'm gonna, I'll weld this up and then do the same thing again. Yep. So it's the next day, I got these welded up and they're almost done being drawn out. They need to go to like a one inch square, they're close. But I changed the design just a little bit. So originally each of these triangles would be one piece of twist Damascus, but instead of that I'm going to weld together two pieces of twist Damascus. That'll have like an arrow type of shape probably, and then I'll cut that into triangles and tile it like that. The reason I'm telling you this, last night I was thinking about this pattern and I was like, hey, this is kind of similar to a knife that I saw Will Stelter make on YouTube. I was like, okay, cool. They're pretty similar. And then I watched the video again. I realized just uh, look at, they're the exact same. It is the exact same pattern that I'm doing right now. I, I, I don't know how that happened. I might have just subconsciously wrote down exactly what he did before. Maybe we had the exact same idea. Uh, but just know that this is not original. A much better knife maker than me already did this. And I was just thinking, wow, this is so original. I've never seen anybody do something like this before. Yes, I have. I've, I've seen th this exact same thing. I should have got a glove, this is really hot. So the, uh, the difficult thing right now is that it's really thick, I'm tired and I'm weak.
So I got the bars of Damascus twisted up, looking like a Twizzler. And I want these two sides meeting up together really well. So I forge them back down into a rectangle and surface ground one side. I only need to grind one side because I want to remove as little material as possible. And I got the two pieces meeting up together nicely and I started yapping now. So I'll let myself yap. So I got both of these pieces ground flat and butted up next to each other. And they are ground super flat. You can't see any light in these, which is great. They're super tight. And to make sure no oxygen gets in between these two layers, I'm going to weld all the way around it. And TIG welding does not like all of this black forge scale that's on there. So this is gonna be a messy weld. It's gonna be really bad. So I'll get a good shot of it because it'll be fun in uh, I'm gonna destroy my tungsten type of fun. And I'm realizing now, I was going to bring my welder over here so I can weld it in this vise, but I would have to move my tank of shielding gas and I don't wanna do that. Can I move this vise? I'd rather not, but I could just move this vise. What other options do I have? Okay, I could use the vise that I can put next to the welder, but that vise, the jaws don't like connect well. I could unbolt this vise and bring it over to the welder or I could move the tank. That's the third option and I really don't want to move that tank of gas. Oh, can I? No, I can't. Thinking if I just take it off. Wait, can I? Can I just take it off of the swivel base? Maybe I don't have to unbolt it. <gasps> oh wait, big brain. I think I can just, I can just, come on, vice, come here. You're coming with me. It, I cannot just take off the swivel part. Y'all ever seen a vice in a vice? Oh, that's not falling over. That's not falling over. Now it is. Alrighty. I'm about to weld it up. Isn't that exciting? I just need to quickly smack these two pieces together. Ow, it's so hot. That's it. Get it back in. I'll do one more heat of that, of that exact same thing. And then I'll let it soak in the forge. And it's staying really hot in the forge for a long time, letting it soak in there, is going to grow the grain size, which helps it weld together. Okie dokie, welding heat number two. Ow, it's still hot. Ow, that's so hot. Now I'm just gonna wait like 10 minutes, leave it in there at temperature. Okay, so while that is soaking, we can go over a little bit what the next step is. So I had to do this paper thing just to like, uh, make sure I understood what was going on since it was pretty confusing, but I think I got it. So I'm gonna cut that piece up into squares like this. I need to split those in half and graph paper on graph paper was not a good idea. Taking those, rotating them in, to make that shape, you get you get it? Then for the very ends to make it a square, it's just one of those triangles cut in half in some orientation. Uh, hold on, I'll figure it out. Like that, yay, I figured it out. Slots in perfectly. And to make all of these borders really defined, I'm going to have big black lines going through all of those borders. That'll be with a uh, crew forge V probably. Doesn't really matter, I just want it to be black when it's etched and that'll look really cool and really show off all of this hiling that I did. So after that's welded up, I need to bring it down to one and a half inches wide and then I can do this tiling thing and it'll be really cool. Man, this is crusty. Yeah, just sitting in the forge is oxidizing it a lot. I could try adjusting the burners so there's less oxygen in here. So what I'm talking about with the burners is you see a lot of the uh, a lot more of the yellow flame coming out. That means that the fire is a little bit deprived of oxygen, which means there's no oxygen in, in the middle of the forge, which is one, going to help the weld because there's no oxygen in there, oxygen in there, and it's also going to have less scale and less waste from the surface being oxidized. So I want a bunch of that yellow flame coming out. Okay, I only need um, how much do I need? I need about seven inches of material. This is thicker than it needs to be, like this direction. I think I'm gonna take like five inches and then draw that out to seven. So then all this I can use on a different project, a different knife maybe. This project has been so much forging. I honestly, I don't know if I can make just blacksmithing interesting for 10 minutes, but I'll do my best. <laughs> That's doing nothing. Come on, little press, you can do it. Ooh, is that? 
No, never mind. We're good. I thought there was a little crack forming, but no, I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh my God, absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Ow, it's so hot. Alrighty, that's done foraging for like the third time. Ta-da. Do you see that? That was so cool. So we got all the triangles cut out and squared off. So these sides are nice since these sides are gonna be what's contacting. And now we can get it laid out into the final rectangle. Wait, no, we can't. Yeah, I need to cut one of these in half to make these little half triangles. All right, I got all of my little triangles cut out. I also have my spacers. These will be the big black lines. It's gonna be like zigzagging through the whole thing. Oh, and it took me three tries to cut out eight of these little rectangles to fit in between these triangles. I, I don't wanna talk about it. I just like wasn't thinking two times. And by the third time, I, I got it right. I did it, yeah. Um, uh, so we should be ready to weld this up for the third time. Hopefully this is the last time. If nothing goes wrong and going by my track record on cutting out rectangles, I, I will probably mess something up today. So I spent a few hours trying to get these triangles welded up and I couldn't find a good way to get it clamped down. And I was burning myself constantly. I was getting really frustrated. So I came back the next day and what ended up working really well is having a 45 degree plate welded down to give myself something to clamp down onto. And I just had to take it slow. And when I got in the mindset of this is going to take a while, it went all right. And you know what you haven't seen enough of today is surface grinding. I've just really been enjoying the surface grinder. So I use it constantly. And like, I know I didn't need to surface grind them. I just really wanted to. Yeah, just know if you're sick of all of this welding, I am too. So you might have noticed that the jacket, the uh, little sheet of steel didn't weld onto the billet, which is great because the only purpose of that was just to keep oxygen out. So now I can chisel the whole thing off, grind it flat, grind it nice and clean, bring it up to a good finish. So now we can expose the final pattern. And I'll look because I'm sure there's gonna be some weld in here that I need to take out. But yeah, I... I hope this looks good. I spent like a week making this and I haven't seen what it looks like yet. Let's look, I'm sure there's gonna be tons of stuff I need to grind out, but I just wanna look, see how it's going. Oh, that's not entirely what I expected. That sounded bad, I, I don't think it's bad. 
lot less dense than I thought. The actual Damascus itself is a lot more bold of a pattern than I expected. Uh, let me flip it and go in a bit longer. I'm not gonna be able to see that much anyway. Don't drop it. Shake it, even though that does absolutely nothing. Can you see it? Can, can you see it? <laughs> it's cool. It's really cool. It's very bold, a lot of big lines, which I meant to make a bold. I don't know if I meant to do this much. It's kind of just like less interesting than a really fine pattern, but it's still really cool. I did put two little lines on this side because I don't like how the pattern came out on this side very much. I love this section, so I'm gonna make this the knife and this the handle. You don't need to know that, I'm just saying that so I remember. There are a few happy accidents, but it's unique. It's not unique, we talked about this, but it's cool and I like it. So I love being able to spend a bunch of time making a really cool piece. So that means uh, that's all for now. You have a safe drive home, okay, bye. That felt really fruity. I don't know if I meant to make it that fruity. I'll keep it though.